Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabansi. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic, debates, entertainment, and when we give you guys a first perspective on things and how we see them. And today, we have a very, very interesting show for you guys. Uh, but before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want today's full show before it comes out, it is streaming for free on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We have that pinned in the comment section below for the Dreamers Pro Podcast. Let me get into this topic here. Yesterday, uh, well, the last 24 hours has been, um, there's been a lot of electricity in the sports world because of what was said on ESPN yesterday and what's been said after and all of the content that's being produced around this story. So essentially, this is what happened yesterday. Uh, they're, they're hosting ESPN first taken at um, Shannon Sharp's alma mater. Uh, and they have these live audiences. So when you're having a live audience, you need to speak loud. You need to be a little bit more animated to get your energy through in a room full of people, right? So, and this is standard procedure. So they're talking, and at one point in the show, they are addressing uh, some comments that LeBron made. Uh, you know, when he after the Lakers beat the uh, after the Lakers lost, excuse me, to the Miami Heat. So they were addressing some comments that LeBron made in the post game, uh, where he essentially said, "I'm going to quickly paraphrase that." He appreciates everything that happened with the Miami Heat, but he believes that he would have gone on to have the same career uh, had he not joined the Miami Heat. So when they brought this question to the co-hosts of the show or the, the the people that were tuning in to listen to, in this case, Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp, they started weighing in and Shannon Sharp was very, very uh, uh, passionate with his response. So while Shannon was talking, towards the end, Molly Karam, she interjects herself into the conversation and then she starts to interrupt Shannon and usually what happens is when she does that to Stephen A. Smith Stephen A. Smith just sits there quietly he doesn't say anything but in this case Shannon listened to her and then he bounced back like he responded like how like he he responded like yo what do you like as if he's talking to any person on on, on the panel and I was like wow he best he, he definitely shutting her down uh, for trying to interrupt them. And I liked it because I'm like, let the guy finish his thought. Number one, number two, we're tuning in to hear what Shannon Sharp has and Shannon Sharp and Stephen A. Smith predominantly have to say, I'm sorry. That's the reason I watch on this uh, ESPN first take. I'm tuning in to hear what the, what the, what the host of the show uh, have to say, not the moderator. This is just my view. I think a lot of people share this view, right? So we actually want to play that. But before we even get into that, this video is brought to you, brought to you by our brand new sponsor, SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app with over 28 million downloads. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeeks, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more. And with the NFL and NBA season in full swing, SeatGeek has your tickets to every game. Now, here's the best part and the reason I absolutely love SeatGeek. They put all the tickets across the web in one place to make sure you are getting a good deal. Each ticket is rated on a scale of one to 10. So look for the green dots. Green means good, red means bad. Every ticket is backed by the buyer's guarantee and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event. And we have great news for you because we got you guys a really, really good deal. Use code DREAMERSPRO for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code DREAMERSPRO. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. And remember, when you try SeatGeek by using the link in the description below, just know that you're helping this channel. So what we want to do is we want to play this exchange, and I want you guys to listen to it all the way at the end where Molly interrupts Shannon with some point that, that nobody asked her for, and then he now responds to her. Take a listen to that exchange here. I think it still would be at this level, no matter if I would have came here or not. Let's not get it twisted. The four years I was here, it was amazing. I loved everything about it. Loved this franchise. This franchise is top tier. It's one of the best franchises in the world. But as far as my career, my career was going to be my career. And as far as individually, because I know how much I put into the game and I know how much I strive to be as great as I can be. <laughs> and as far as what I was able to learn, he was second to none. That's for sure. Yes. Okay. Shannon? Yes. Do you agree with what LeBron said about his time in Miami? Hell no, I vehemently disagree. I strenuously disagree with what he said. At the time that he had arrived in Miami, he had two M he had two regular season MVPs and one finals appearance through his first seven seasons. LeBron, do you realize the reason why you got into the GOAT conversation because of what transpired in Miami? You won two more finals MVPs. You more won two more regular season MVPs. You went to four straight finals. LeBron, how can you say that your career was going to be the same without going to Miami? 
LeBron, I'm not so sure had you not gone to Miami, how do I make a com compelling case? And I can argue any case before the Supreme Court. How do I make a case that he's a top five player if he doesn't go to Miami, Stephen A? I don't understand why LeBron wants to be so dismissive. Okay, I get it. You dislike Pat Riley. Pat Riley didn't give you the, 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 the latitude that Cleveland, like the Lakers do. I get everything that you're saying from that aspect. But to sit there and sit in front of a, 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 the media and say your career was going to be the, your career was going to be the career. Come on, LeBron, man, you got to stop this. It's okay to give the Miami Heat the credit that they deserve. Man, I almost caught a heart attack. <laughs> I cannot believe I am so proud of you right now. I thought you were going to disagree. This touches my heart, Janet Shaw. <laughs> I can't. I didn't believe you were capable of such a thing. Hey, come on. I, I, with LeBron, I mean, we are marching locks. It's supposed to be a debate show. But damn it, ain't no debate here. No. Because you're 1,000% correct. What the hell is wrong with you, LeBron? What the hell is wrong with you? Let me tell y'all something. LeBron James loses in Boston. When he goes to Miami, how does it happen? You got James Dolan talking about making him a billionaire. That didn't work. You got other teams looking at him. Pat Riley rolled up and put rings on the table. Right. Do, do you want these? Okay, well, here's how you get them. Now, obviously, I've broken the story about how he's going to end up taking his talents to South Beach. But make no mistake about it. Do y'all understand the greatness of a Hall of Famer by the name of Dwayne Wade? Yes. He was a great player. He was a great leader. Let's go back to LeBron's rookie year. LeBron... Every press conference was D. Wade looking right at it, was sitting right next to him. Why was that? Because mentally, despite the greatness of LeBron James as a talent, mentally he was warped. He was scared to shoot free throws. He was scared to really take the bull by the horn. Give me the rock. I'm that dude. I'm that man. Okay? So much so that even after they lost in the finals to Dallas, when Jason Terry was guarding him in the post in the fourth quarter. And don't J. get J. me J. Barrea. And J.J. Barea. Okay? No, no, come on. Stop, by the way. The bottom line is this. When that happened, the following year, All-Star Weekend, and I've said this many times, LeBron James got the ball in his hands. The late, great Kobe Bryant claps his hands. Let's go and defend them. An exhibition All-Star game to just having a good time. And he threw the ball in the corner, and it was a turnover. And Melo, D-Wade, Kobe, everybody descended on LeBron. What's the matter with you? He was warped. He was, and that is why, Shannon Sharp. I haven't given him the title as GOAT because I got to take into account all of those things before you started winning championships. And what I'm saying is that he's been going against Jordan and those brothers right. with that kind of mentality before he ever won a championship. He'd have never won one. They'd have shut it down because they'd have snatched his heart. But because he got to Miami and learned what it took to be a champion, okay. he's been unstoppable since. There's a difference. Let me play devil's advocate because yes. I'm not sure you guys are totally reading his quotes right. So he says, I think I would still be at this level no matter if I would have came here or not. Meaning I'd be this type. Let me just go through it. Yes. I'd be this type of caliber yes, player. I believe that. Whether I went to Miami or not. Let me dive into it again. But as far as my career, my career was going to be my career as far as individually. Because I know how much I put in the game and what I strive to be. Meaning like my destiny was my destiny. Th this is what was planned for me. And I put in the work. No matter where I went, I was going to make it first. happen. How do you see fault in that? How about this? I'll yes, tell you. I, I believe he probably would have been the all-time leading scorer. But there is no argument that could be made that he's the GOAT. There would be no argument that could be made that he's a top five player. How do you know that? Because he doesn't have championships, Molly. You cannot be, you cannot be in the GOAT. How this do you know he couldn't have gone somewhere else and got championships? See, now we're doing hypothetical. But I'm just saying, that's what he's saying. This is a hypothetical. Well, well hypothetically... You want, you, want, you want me to take a shot? You want me to take a shot? Molly, <laughs> Molly, let's deal with what we okay. know. Why is it so hard for him to say, you know what, Miami was great for me. I won two of my, I won two of my finals MVPs in this location. I won two regular season MVPs in location. That's when people start... Once he went to Miami, a lot of people said the best version of LeBron James in his 21-year career was that four-year block in Miami. He was sensational yep. on both ends of the court. 
Okay, yes. Would he have still been playing 21 years? I believe he'd have still been playing 21 years. I believe he'd have been playing at this level. But I do not believe we would not, Stephen A. and others would be having a conversation that he's in the GOAT debate. I believe he's number one had he not gone okay. to Miami. Well, let me so you heard the exchange there. Let me tell you why we're even covering this. The reason we're covering this is because I was surprised to see uh, Shannon react that way to Molly Karam. The reason is, is because of the company that he's working for. ESPN is pretty pro bashing men. That's their whole MO. They love to bash men on that network and uh, belittle guys on their network. They do it at times to black guys. If some people feel like that I offended that I said that, that's your bloody business. It's the bloody fact. Um, and it seems to be standard procedure at the network. So, and you even saw this take place when Malika Andrews felt that she can come on Stephen A. Smith's show and basically dictate the terms of how the show is going to be ran. And then Stephen A. Smith pushed back on her, like, excuse me, you're on my show telling me how we're going to conduct this, you know, how this conversation is going to go. You must be confused uh, where you're at. So for Shannon Sharp to react that way, I was a bit surprised, right? I was a bit surprised, but here's the thing. I think Shannon reacted the same way he would have reacted had it been a man or a woman. I think that was his natural reaction. Do you know why I say that? Because I've heard Shannon Sharp react that very same way hundreds of times to Skip Bayless. And Skip Bayless is a male. We never made a big deal out of it. So we're not going to make a big deal out of that. To me, I was just surprised that that took place on the network because we know ESPN. We know what ESPN stands for. We, 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 we are fully aware of that. My thoughts on the interruption is simply this. Listen, I think that the, the majority of us, when we tune into ESPN First Take, specifically that show, we're tuning in to hear Shannon Sharp speak and Stephen A. Smith speak. In the case of Shannon, he's only on the show two days a week. That's it. He won't be here. He's not there on Wednesday, Thursday. He's not there. He's only uh, Monday and Tuesdays. So when people tune in, they really want to hear what he has to say. And to then interrupt him with a point that made no sense, it made it even worse. Some people are like, but what do, you, what do you mean? Here's why I said it made no sense and it's the reason why uh, Shannon Sharp disagreed and Stephen A. Smith was going to continue to disagree. The reason is this. Shannon already addressed the point she tried to bring up, but she brought it up anyway because she just felt like talking. Shannon said... Could LeBron have gone on to win the scoring title, meaning all time? He said yes. Could he have made all-star teams? Yes. Could he have made all NBA teams? Absolutely. Because that's what he was already doing in Cleveland. In this case, he's talking about winning championships. And that's the point he harped on. He said, this is what Shannon said, there's no way we're having this conversation if LeBron doesn't win those finals MVPs in Miami and is playing at that level on a championship winning team, that was his point. She tried to take it somewhere else that was totally obscure. She was bringing up something he had already addressed. And then what she tried to do, she tried to throw in a hypothetical. He's like, well, how do you know? He's like, I'm dealing with reality. I'm dealing with reality. So to me, it's a breath of fresh air. I understand that's how it works on ESPN first take. That's how it's going to be. Um, these guys, the men on that show are never allowed to really push back in moments like this. And to me, listen, I think you should be able to express yourself the same way you would express yourself to a man or woman if we're all on the same stage together. This is what I personally believe. I think we're all equal. Correct? Correct? If we're all equal, we should all be able to react to each other equally. Am I wrong or right, right about this? If we're all equal, we should all get the same reactions. Just what I'm saying. Or are we not all equal? Or is it that we're equal and not equal depending on the circumstance? See the hypocrisy? These are my thoughts. Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comments. Oh, and oh by the way, if you guys try to take it down that road, oh, you admit he doesn't like, you're going to lose very quickly. <laughs> my first child is a, is a girl. And I love her more than anybody apart from my, my wife and my, my parents. So uh, not going to work. Catch you on the next show. Peace.